In this video, we're going to look at motion in a resistive medium and how we can describe that using a differential equation. We're going to use a first order differential equation in this case to describe the motion of an object in some sort of resistive medium. All right, so when an object moves through a medium such as air or a fluid, or, or, or some other thing, maybe a, a marble, as I'm going to suggest here, a marble moving through oil, okay, through, you think of some, maybe some vegetable oil, or cooking oil in a tube, and you've got a marble at the bottom, and then you're going to project the marble up or drop it from the top down, what, what have you, how will it move? Now, the resistance uh, usually depends on, upon the velocity of the object, and that velocity will change over time so the uh, resistance it experiences a force a resistive force to its motion um, will change with the velocity now often it, it can be directly proportional to the velocity so the force could be some constant k times the velocity or it could take the form of other power relationships such as the force is a constant times the square of the velocity or the force is a constant times the velocity to the power of 2.35 or, or some other such value. Okay, now, when we want to describe the motion of an object, uh, what we're interested in is the net force acting on the object, because it is the net force that makes an object, that determines an object's motion. If you remember Newton's first law, an object will remain at rest or in a state of constant velocity unless acted upon by an outside force. So an object's either, if it's not acted upon by a force, it'll be at rest or it'll be moving at some constant velocity, okay, which means a constant speed and a constant direction, um, unless acted upon by a force. Newton's second law, uh, more commonly known as F equals MA, means an object will accelerate in the direction of that force for as long as that force is applied. And the force is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration. Okay, we can write the acceleration as the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Okay, force is a vector quantity, so we refer to the velocity. Okay, so uh, in general, you can imagine some object which I'll represent as this circle here. Okay, um, it may be falling through some uh, medium okay, uh, acting under the force of gravity because it is the net force, it's forces that determine the motion of an object and so we must always first begin in these situations by determining the net force on the object. Okay, so if you can imagine this marbles falling through, uh, a, we've got a long uh, cylinder of thick oil, we've dropped a marble in, the weight force, gravity, is the mass of the marble times acceleration due to gravity. That'll be the weight force down, and the resistive force will be in the opposite direction, opposing its motion. So it'll be k times the velocity in this particular case. Okay, for this example here. When we're working with forces and these sorts of problems, we need to set up a direction system. Uh, we need a direction in which um, there's a positive direction, and then the opposite of that will be negative. So in this particular case, all the motion is in the vertical up-down direction. So let's choose up as plus. Forces acting up are acting in the positive direction and forces acting downwards, that's in the opposite direction, will be negative and they must have a minus sign in front of them. So here, the resistive force, K times the velocity, is acting in the upward direction, up the page here, that's in the positive direction and the weight force is acting downwards in a negative direction and so the, uh, that will have a minus. So um, the net force, um, remember F remember F equals MA from Newton's second law and we can write A as dV dt so the net force is mass times dV dt that's the rate of change of velocity with respect to time will be our net force we'll just call capital F our net force um, sometimes you'll see in lots of problems you're going to see uh, F used more than once, so F net will be written F with a subscript net to mean net force. Okay, but you always must find the net force, which means you must sum up all the forces involved in the problem uh, and take them into account in, in, in setting up the equations of motion. So our net force will be kV, now that's in the positive direction, so it just has a plus. We can also write on the page here next to it mg, but we're going to have to put a minus sign in front of that because it's in the negative direction. So we're summing these two forces, the positive and the negative, okay? Um, and that's why we end up with k times v minus m times g. m is just the mass of the object. v is the velocity of the object, t is time, 
Okay, K is some constant, F is the net force. So that's the equation of motion that describes how this object will move. All right, and it's always it's a net force acting because it's forces that determine the motion of an object. If there's no forces present, then an object's either at rest or in a, a constant state of motion. So moving in a single direction with a constant speed. Okay, let's have a look at an example now. Put this into effect <clears throat> as a first order differential equation. All right, so a particle is projected vertically upwards with a velocity of u meters per second. So at the instant it's projected, at the instant it's released, it has this velocity u meters a second, meters per second in the upwards direction. Okay. Now it's rising against a resistive force of k times v squared, so some constant times the square of its velocity. Whatever its velocity at that moment is, okay, that'll be the resistive force acting on it. Here our constant, I'm just going to give you this, is k is 1 on 25g, okay, it's 1 25th of g, okay, 1 on 25g, sorry, okay, and the, um, and u equals 4g. So the initial velocity u will be 4 times g. So we're given that, they're, they're going to, well this, this one here, u equals 4g, will help us as a boundary condition later on. Now, first thing to find, we need to sum up the net forces, but to do that, we need to have a positive direction and a negative direction. So the motions in the upward direction, we might choose that as positive, which is what I'm going to do here. You don't have to, you could choose the downward direction as positive if you wanted to, it's up to you. It really doesn't matter so long as you are consistent. For me, I'm just going to think of the object as moving upwards and moving in the positive direction. Okay, so up. Now, there are two forces acting on it. It's given some initial velocity, 4 times g, which is a bit under 40 metres per second. g is 9.8, so 4 of those is a bit under 40 metres per second. Clearly, from the moment it's released, these two forces, the weight force and the resistive force, are going to be acting to pull it down and bring its velocity down to zero and then cause it to drop again. Okay? So, let's set up the net force F. Okay, well, the net force F will be acting on it. Well, there are only forces acting in the negative direction. There's nothing acting up. So it's going to be minus mg for the weight force, minus kv squared for the resistive force. And that net force is equal to m times dv dt, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, which is the acceleration. Remember, the acceleration is um, dv dt. Remember, the net force acting on an object is f equals ma. And so we have minus g minus v squared on 25g. Okay, remember k was 1 on 25g. Now, we can write that as, let's just divide through by m. We'll just divide through by m, and that'll leave us with, so divide through by m here. That will leave us with dv dt is minus outside of g plus v squared on 25mg. Okay, let's find a common denominator. This will help us, uh, instead of having two terms here, if we have a single term, we might be able to use, as you'll suspect later on, maybe an inverse tan when we anti-differentiate. You'll see why shortly. Okay, so um, just as a guess, but sometimes just handy because it's then one object we can just take the reciprocal of as we're going to do shortly. So we've got a common denominator, so 25 mg squared plus v squared on 25 mg, just common denominator here. Okay, now, Next line down, what we can do with that is we can take the reciprocal of that. So dt dv is minus 25mg on 25mg squared plus v squared. Okay, looking good so far. Um, and dt dv, we can, let's take out a factor of minus 5 times the square root of m. By doing that, what we're leaving here is 5 times the square root of m times g because 5 times minus 5 will give us minus 25. Square root of m times square root of m gives us m and just the factor g there, g here. And then underneath, what that means is that 25mg squared can be written as 5 times the square root of m times g all squared, because if you square all that out again, you get 25mg squared plus v squared. Now that's looking handy because when it comes to anti-differentiating, it's looking a bit like an inverse tan, okay? Remember, something inverse tan had this form of a on a squared plus x squared dx gave us inverse tan x on a plus our constant. All right. Now, 
Okay, so from here, we'll separate the differentials. Um, and we'll have dv over here, and that'll give us, and uh, when we do integrate the left side, we'll have t is equal to minus 5 squared m times the integral 5mg dv, all over what we had on the previous line. Okay, so that just gives us, now if you look at this, this really is this, a is 5 times square root m times g. Um, a squared underneath is this object, our x squared here is v squared, and so we have this constant out front, minus 5 times square root m, inverse tan v on, Remember, x on a, v on 5 square root m g. All right, plus our constant of integration. So we've got an expression for the time of the object given its velocity at any particular moment. Now, at t equals 0, its initial velocity um, was 4g. Remember that nearly 40 metres per second? almost 40 meters per second, so that's the initial at t equals zero only. Okay, so let's substitute that in there, t equals zero, so I'll put zero in here, and over here, where v is, we're gonna put 4g. Okay, so we get um, zero is equal to minus five square root m inverse tan 4g on five square root mg. Okay, and we can see that the g's will cancel, and we will have, um, okay, this will mean that here we've got our constant will be this object taken over the other side so that c is equal to 5 square root m inverse tan 4 over 5 times square root m. Remember the g's cancelled. Okay, so that's our constant c. So our time t, okay, the object will be equal to minus 5 square root m inverse tan v on 5 times square root mg plus this expression here, okay? Now, we could of course um, take that over the other side and produce a larger expression for the velocity uh, as a function of time. Um, uh, that would be the next step if you wanted to do that, but it's not particularly necessary here. But if you want to do, you would take the right-hand side here, bring it over here, so it'd be t minus all that, then divide through by this, then take the tan of both sides, and then multiply through by five square root m on g to get v by itself. Okay, um, that's it. So that's uh, motion and resistive medium. Just remember, what's most important, if I come back here, you must find the net force acting on the object. You must choose a positive direction. Sum those forces to give you the net force. Okay, depending on your directions you've chosen, then you work from there to do your uh, work with differential equations. All right, that's it.